Welcome to Mixer Cricket Farm. I'm Charity Kelsey, a cricket attendant. As a cricket, okay, as a cricket attendant, we're here to attend the crickets like we are here to ensure that they grow to maturity. So what I do as a cricket attendant, the first thing, actually crickets are dependent on hygiene. When crickets are domesticated for human consumption, here we domesticate them like for human consumption. So we ensure that they are, there is high hygiene. And then another thing, so the first thing I do as a cricket attendant when I come in the morning, I regulate the temperature. How do I regulate the temperature? Cricket do, does well in a, in a temperature of 28 to 32 degrees. So the first thing I do in a cricket, in a cricket rearing facility, I, I open all, I, I increase the ventilations. A cricket facility is ventilated. If you check around mix a cricket, fa cricket farm or the cricket house, it's ventilated. But what I do, I increase the the ventilation during the day because in Kisumu County it's hotter compared to other other places and if I would be in a, a colder in a colder area uh, I would reduce the ventilation to ensure that I attain my 28 to 32 degrees temperature so the, the first thing I, the, the other thing that I do is like I give them fresh food and fresh water every day like you have to feed them you have to give them fresh water every day and I wash the cricket utensils we have cricket utensils and uh, as, a, as a cricket farmer, when you're focusing on a low cost of production, here is also, it's also environmental friendly. You can recycle, to get the cricket utensils, you can recycle the leads, the tins, and you can recycle some, some containers to use as the cricket utensils. So after ensuring that the hygiene is well, I also check the activities that happens in my cricket rearing unit. Like, I check how the, the, lane, the lane conditions, I check if the, the death rates, I check the feeding, the feeding process, uh, progress, how they fed. This, ha this helps me to determine how, how active are my crickets or how inactive are my crickets. If I find this higher death rate, there's something wrong with my crickets. It's either the hygiene is very poor or it's either there is something that has happened to my crickets. But, um, I will check if, if, if there are predators inside the pen or inside the rare unit. Like the major threat of crickets are predators and pred the major predator are the safarians. But rats, rats, and yeah, rats, rats and lizards. But the major threat we always have are the safarians. So I ensure that there are no predators inside my pen. So in a cricket rearing unit, like in a cricket rearing unit, it can either be a crate system or a pen system. So the difference between a crate system and a, a, and a pen system is that the quantity they carry. Like you find that a crate system carries a quantity of about 1,500 heads of crickets and a pen system carries a, a quantity of about 30,000 heads of crickets. And how do you know that this is 1,500 heads of crickets or this is 30,000 heads of crickets? Like this, pro this, this quantity is determined during a process called a process of installation. Like what is installation? Installation is the process of transferring like peanuts. Peanuts are the young ones of a cricket from the hatchery to the rearing unit. And during this process, we use a special spoon called a scooping spoon. A scooping spoon is a calibrated spoon in milliliters. So in mixer cricket farm, 10 ml, 10 milliliters is equivalent to 1,500 crickets. So which means in in, my, in one crate I put one scoop, and in a pen I put 20 scoops. So that brings about the quantity difference. So this one carries a pen system carries a larger quantity, a crate system carries a smaller quantity. So. After installation, like I was talking about something called an hatchery. Somebody will ask what is an hatchery. An hatchery here, just like in, it's like an incubator. It's where we, we put our egg, egg, egg containers, our eggs to, to hatch. And it takes a, 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 a period of about 9 to 15 days for the peanuts to start popping. And uh, you put these things in an inter, you put these egg laying containers in, in, like in an interval of 3 days. Like what do I mean? Like after every 3 days you collect your eggs and transfer them to the hatchery using an egg lane container so after installation whereby after installation now you install them where you install them that rearing unit you install them is where they will grow to maturity no interference there's just different stages we have a cricket ruler that helps you determine the 
cricket stages. It will help you to determine when to introduce your hideouts, like when to introduce your egg, egg laying containers, when to introduce your water with the pebbles, or when to introduce your water with the blankets. At a younger stage, when they are peanuts, we give them water using blankets to prevent them from that, from drowning. But using a cricket ruler, with time you will also you will know when to introduce your hideouts. What are hideouts? Hideouts are, are like they are in in we call them egg laying egg laying. They're just egg laying trays, like the egg trays. They are egg trays. But in a cricket farm, we call them hideouts. Crickets are nocturnal. You have to imitate everything they do in the habitat, so introduce them hideouts so that they use them to hide. And then in a cricket. In a cricket rearing unit, you also provide them with feed. You provide them with water. I was talking about different stages of giving them water. The young ones, you give them water using blankets to prevent them from drowning. But the adults, when you give them water using uh, water, but to introduce pebbles for them to also to prevent them from drowning. So a female to differentiate between a female and a male cricket in a cricket in a, in a cricket pen, it's about the tails. The tails, a male cricket has two tails, a female cricket has three tails. And what do we call these tails? We are, a male cricket has two tails, which we call them the sassy, but the female crickets have three tails. We call an additional one, it's the ovipositor. What is an ovipositor in a cricket, in a female cricket? An ovipositor is a reproduction part of a female cricket. It is what it uses to deposit its egg in a substrate. What is a substrate? A substrate is um, is a is a sterilized soil that a cricket uses that a female cricket deposits its egg. How do we come up with a substrate? A substrate is a a, a humus a, a humus a, a soil with a lot of humus. Mostly researchers found that cow dung do so well. You dry you collect your your soil or your cow dung. You dry you sieve. After sieving you take through a process called sterilization. Sterilization is a process. Of, that is done by heating. You heat your soil until you see it turns black. That means that all the microbes inside this soil have died and it's good for it's good for the female to lay their eggs. But this soil you have to always to keep it moist. In the habitat, insects always lay their eggs in a mo female insects are always selective. They will not lay their eggs and you'll never meet a, a female egg any a, a female insect egg anywhere. They will always lay the, their their choose they lay their eggs in a moist condition. So you ensure that you always keep this soil moist. And that's why you will go for the humus, humus, the soil that has a lot of content of humus. The a soil with the high humus content. To keep always the humus content in this soil, it helps to retain the water. And you, what you always do as a cricket attendant, you always sprinkle your, you always use a sprinkler to sprinkle your substrate when you are attending the crickets on a everyday, on a daily basis to keep it moist. So you can decide as a cricket farmer that I want to rear my crickets for basically consumption, or I want to rear my crickets for. For, to give me eggs, like for parent stock. So that comes about like we have a consumption. In a, in a rearing unit, you'll see you, you may have a consumption crate or a parent stock crate, or you may have a consumption pen or a parent stock pen. And so here comes about that like a consumption pen, you harvest after 75 days. Like here, the crickets have not fully developed some parts like the wings, like the tassels in their legs, like they have not developed very long antennas. But when you harvest after 75 five days after like when you're collecting your eggs like here the crickets will have fully developed like the tassels you'll be finding the, you, the wings in the food you'll be finding the long antenna in the food so that is the major difference and the parent stock is what keeps the cycles going in the in the inner cricket farm because it lays eggs and legs give us peanuts and peanuts give us crickets and the circle continues in a cricket farm so I say after that after all the process my crickets have grown I decide now as a farmer I want to harvest during my harvesting day what I do if I was to if I if I was to uh, I, I, if I was to harvest tomorrow I starve them on a previous day like if I, I if I was to harvest today I, I would have starved them on a previous day what is starving starvation is the process by actually not giving insects food insect crickets food but you only serve them with water to clear the gut 
when the gut is cleared, like all the poo that are in the cricket stomach are no longer there. So I come the next morning, I do my harvesting. How do I do my harvesting? I will come up with a harvesting basket. After coming with a harvesting basket, I'll remove all the water containers inside there. If there was any substrate, I remove. And then I will shake my, I will, I will shake my crates, the egg, the hideouts inside the harvesting basket, each one by one, until I ensure all the crickets are out of a cricket rearing unit, which might be a pen or a crate. We have post-harvest activities after harvesting. So our post-harvest activity, one thing that we really we start with, we start with a process called blanching. Blanching is immersing like these crickets, the harvested crickets, into hot water for two minutes. After after immersing them into hot water for two two minutes, you rinse them with you rinse them with warm water. Then you put them out to dry. So after drying, consumption begins. But you can still also begin your consumption actually after after rinsing them with warm water if if you are that confident. But after dry after drying, consumption begins. And here you can do the value addition part of it, or you can do the whole cricket part of it. So the value addition part of it, like you crush it into a powder form, and then you make it as one of the ingredients that you are using in in bakery products. Like in Mixer Cricket Farm, we do the bakery product, we bake cricket bread, cricket waffles, cricket cakes, cricket cookies. And why do we do this? Because like here we rear crickets like for human consumption and why we opt for crickets and not any other thing. Crickets are highly proteinous compared to any other livestock. Like in like if you consume two crickets in a week, you are more than this person who con consumes like a kg of meat every day because one single cricket contains up to about 65% protein, just a single cricket. Hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.